Members, members of the public, <clears throat> over the next three years we will undertake a journey to become, to become a radically different council. Our vision is to become a council that supports communities to do more for themselves and help each other, keeps vulnerable people safe and helps them to stay in control of their lives, is responsible for services but focuses on the things only the council can do, creates trust and connections between institutions, businesses and citizens. This vision for a new council reflects the fact that we are dealing with huge budget pressures. In the face of these budget pressures, we need to radically change what we do and how we do it. The new council programme has been developed so that we are in the best possible position to manage budget re reductions in a way that has a minimum negative impact on our, on our local people in Kirklees. At the centre of this is the principle of building healthy, resilient communities who are able to do more for themselves and each other. Today, the focus is on the new library service. The officers and I have been working hard to consult with communities and develop the proposals that are here for decision this afternoon. Slide one. Our objectives in developing the new library service had a number of key objectives. At Council in February this year, we set the budget for the coming three years initially identifying an annual budget of 2.5 million, which we decided to increase this to 3.9 million for the library service. The objectives of the review and the proposals have been to preserve as much service as possible, find new and innovative ways of doing things, working closer with communities and provide as many access points as possible, all within the 3.9 million pound budget. I believe that these proposals achieve these objectives but they cannot be met without the continued hard work of staff and support of volunteers and community groups. Library services are wide ranging and have evolved over the years to become real community hubs. They provide a warm and friendly environment for users. We are the seventh largest metropolitan authority and of our population approximately 16% of the population use their library card 2014-15. At this point, I just need to alert Cabinet to slight error in the report. This is on page 27 of the papers and is regarding mobile users at paragraph 3442. The report should say 914, which is 39.03 percent of users, live within a one to two mile radius of a static library, and 147, which is 5.65 percent, live outside a two mile radius, of which just 12 are above the three miles. The mobile service is actually used by less than 1% of the population. We are required to make provision for a comprehensive and efficient library service in line with an Act of 1964. There is no definition of what comprehensive and efficient means. So this is for each council to decide what the provisions will be. To help us develop the proposals, we had a 12-week consultation earlier this year, which ran from January to April. And we had a good healthy debate at Council on the 29th of July 2015. I am pleased to say that we had over 5,000 responses to the consultation. The consultation stretched across the borough and included users and non-users alike. We consulted on three different types of library model. There was support for town library and community supported libraries. But consultees were not keen at all, at all on community run libraries. There was also little appetite for book drops as an option. Consultees are supportive of library, librarian outreach, the home service, transcription service, as these uh, supports e equality in needs of communities. They also said that localised provision was important to them. There was also a willingness for volunteering, as we well know by some of the groups I can see here today. We had already expected that so many members of the community have offered their support and indeed volunteering in many of our libraries for many different activities as well as supporting the staff in their roles. In Home Firth, there was overwhelming support for the merger of the Tourist Information Centre and the library to save money. Consultees didn't support stopping the mobile service, but few had actually used the service. You may recall that the majority of the population do not use the library service. And when asked, 80% of non-users said that nothing would encourage them to become users. We have saved over £800,000 in the last five years. During this time, we have not had to close any of our libraries, 
or stop any of our mobiles and home services from running. Nationally and locally, Yorkshire and Humber, the picture is much different, where local affairs have been closing libraries or handing them over to the community, reducing mobile provision and ceasing mobile provision in its entirety in many areas. I was at the British Library only last week at an Arts Council funded seminar and I was speaking to other cabinet members from around the country and it was clear they found it hard to believe that we have managed to maintain the service for so long with the extent of the cuts in our budget from central government, which is a credit to how we've managed to use our limited resources wisely, prudently in the last few years. Newcastle, for example, has only 18 libraries on a budget of over 4 million. We are proposing to have 24 or less than 4. I've been told that this set of proposals lacks vision and that Birmingham is a shining light of what can be done. Well, let's look at Birmingham, shall we? I've been in touch with a relevant portfolio holder and the result of our communication is a real eye-opener. The new library costs a staggering £197 million and costs a million a month in debt before a single door is open to the public. It was originally open 60 hours a week and cost £16 million a year to run, which was £4 million over its £12 million budget. So what did they do? 50% of the staff were made redundant and opening hours slashed to just 40. Whilst initially it did see an increase in usage, that is now falling faster than the national average as people have got used to the nice shiny new building and tourists are no longer attracted to it. They are looking at different uses of the library, that is true. But Birmingham has a population of 1,132,300 and we only have 428 across the whole of the authority. All the alternative uses have no effect on the library opening hours and can only work with a large population. So yes, this report does lack the vision of Birmingham and I can't tell you how pleased I am. For a cost of £28 million, they could only provide one library. It costs £300,000 per hour in debt alone. We can provide 24 and all the other services we are proposing for less than four million. Being a tight-fisted Yorkshireman does have its advantages and never was a great Yorkshire war cry of how much more aptly used. Our future library proposal was developed based on some key criteria that being meeting the equality needs of our citizens where they are disabled or disadvantaged because they live in areas of deprivation. Working within a budget of £3.92 million that the service is financially sustainable, is flexible and can be delivered in different ways and how well the existing service is used. Seeking to maximise community involvement, helping them to do more for themselves and each other through volunteers and through support of the Friends Group that are forming all over the borough. Our proposals are based on the key criteria and I believe, and I'm pleased that we have been able to maintain significant provision. The proposals are based on the feedback in the consultation and on our objectives. Our eight town libraries will be fully staffed for the hours stated, but will be supplemented through volunteers, as many of these already have volunteers working within the service. Our 16 community supported libraries will have one paid member of staff for the hours stated, but we'll need a volunteer to support them to ensure the service is delivered appropriately. These community supported libraries are only sustainable if volunteers work alongside the paid staff. Should volunteer levels fall, volunteer levels fall below expectations for 25% or more of the time in a quarterly period, then we'll have no choice but to review that library against the set criteria. Communities can also open the library themselves outside the times a paid member of staff is on site, if they, if should they wish. Lepton and Thornhill, these libraries are proposed for closure as they fail to meet the criteria, particularly around usage and community involvement. The librarian outreach offer working with schools and communities and the social inclusion offer will help us achieve our aim of providing services where needed. Merging services in Homeforth has local support and saves money. The mobile service supports a small number of the community and library users. Most library users use, a, use their local library and less than 4% of library users are more users of mobiles. The consultation showed little support for closing the mobile service, but few of those actually use the service. The mobile service is very costly 
and retaining any part of it would mean that other static provision would have to close. We will discuss with all current mobile users how they access the library service in the future and those that meet the criteria for home service will receive it. Our recommendations are, as you can see on the screen, the library service is delivered from eight town libraries and 16 community supported libraries at the hours stated. That a social inclusion offer is developed covering the transcription, talking news and home services. That the library and tourist information centres are merged in Home Firth. And that 1st of April 2016, the libraries at Thornhill Lees, Lepton are closed and the mobile service ceases operation. That where, support, where volunteer support falls below expectations for over 25% of the time in a quarterly period, a report considering closure is developed for Cabinet. And that where a community supported library is asset transferred, the Council will not pay a hosting fee.